Hey, how are you doing? This is Craig Beck from StopDrinkingExpert.com, the website where we help people to escape the loop of problem drinking. Uh, 12 years been going now. That's over, well, several hundred thousand people now living happy, sober lives um, because of this program, whether that be the online course that you can do at the website or the boot camps that I've been doing around the world. Unfortunately, they've been on hold for two years now uh, because of this annoying pandemic that's killed travel everywhere. Uh, my goal is to start them up again because uh, they do seem to be valuable and helpful. I uh, had an email off a lady called Susie uh, this morning, came to boot camp three years ago, has not had a single drink since then, since that day. So congratulations, Susie, and thank you for letting me know. I, I read all the emails I get. It always makes a huge impact on me when I hear a story like that, that that one day had such a profound impact on you. So thank you for getting in touch. Today, uh, several videos today, uh, but there are new videos online every day at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And also we do a live stream every Wednesday and ask me anything, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Try and make it. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us all just to come together and support each other. There is strength in numbers. There is something kind of special about knowing that you're not doing this on your own. There are millions of people around the world all in the same boat as you. Um, and certainly, I hope you get the feeling with this channel, it's completely non-judgmental. Nobody is better or worse than anybody else. It's got nothing to do with how much you drink, the mistakes you've made, the people you've hurt. It's all about the common enemy. We are the sober army. We are here to fight that evil clown that lives in our head. All right. So please subscribe to the channel. Um, the only way I'm going to be able to do another boot camp is if we get the numbers of people who subscribe to this channel up. Why? Uh, because sadly, Google don't like me as much as it used to. Uh, I used to rank first page on Google for uh, stopping drinking in the United States. Um, they released some algorithm updates. Um, that gave preference. It was called the Medic Update. It happened a few years ago, and it gave preference to um, clinics with very respected doctors attached to them. Uh, so anything kind of healthcare related that didn't have a very well-known doctor attached to it um, got knocked down the rankings. And as such, it's kind of difficult for me to put on events now and, and find the number of people I need to make them, well, pay for themselves. So uh, if you can subscribe to this channel, share the videos, uh, like as much as you can, you'll be doing me a big favor and you'll be enabling me to bring the Quit Drinking Boot Camp back. Today, I want to talk about uh, are you in denial about your drinking? Maybe you stumbled across this channel because there's that lurking doubt that even though you've said to yourself that you haven't got a problem, maybe someone else has commented maybe more than once, or someone you really respect has had a quiet word with you. And while you may have dismissed them initially, it's kind of, you know, it's coming back and repeating on you and just, you know, irritating you that maybe they have a point as much as you hate to accept it. So let's talk about how you know if you're in denial about your drinking. Uh, it's really easy, actually. But nobody, hardly anyone does this. It's to kind of float above yourself and see your response to any questioning of your drinking from a third person's point of view, almost as though you're watching your life, as though it's a performance on a stage and you're watching it. And I want you to be kind of objective about your response to a perfectly innocent question. So if somebody comes up to you and your friends or your family and they say, hey, listen, I um, just want to talk to you about your drinking. Uh, I think you're drinking a bit too much. What's your response to that statement? Do you attack? Do you listen carefully and consider what they're saying? Do you have an excuse ready to go, all pre-prepared, and it just flows out instantly? Now, if those are true, I want you to think about what if someone challenged you about something that you don't have a problem with? How would you respond? So imagine if someone came up to you and said, hey, listen, I'm, I'm a bit worried about the amount of uh, potatoes you're eating. <laughs> um, I'm concerned you have a problem with potatoes. 
your response to that sort of statement would be confusion, wouldn't it? Be like, no, why? Tell me more, you know, give me more information. I need to know why you think I've got a problem with potatoes because this is very, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. That would be your response, wouldn't it? I know it's a ridiculous comparison, but I'm just I'm just trying to make the point here. You see, the when someone challenges you about your drinking, there's no confusion on your part, is there? There's no kind of, oh, well, I don't know how you've reached that assumption. You know subconsciously. You know at the back of your head that they're right. That's why you have an answer ready. That's why you automatically go on the defensive. That's why you're not asking for more information. You don't want them to keep talking. You want them to shut up. Why? Well, it's not because you don't have a problem. It's the opposite. You see how that makes sense? You see, you if it wasn't a problem in your life, you wouldn't have to justify it to yourself. And what us drinkers become very good at is lying with great confidence to ourselves. And it's that old story that if you tell a lie often enough, it becomes the truth. Um, I think this is why politicians can be so brazen about what they're saying. I think they've lied so often that they, they can't tell the difference between a lie and the truth anymore. You know, some of the, some of the uh, lies I used to tell myself, I used to say, well, you know, I can't be, you know, an alcoholic because, well, I can go weeks without drinking if I want to. I don't drink in the morning. I never get the urge to drink alcohol in the morning. I haven't had a DUI. I haven't been arrested. I haven't missed any work. I'm a professional guy. I'm a director of two companies. I'm the patron of a children's charity. I'm married. I've got a nice house, a nice car. I've got children. I've got responsibilities. I'm not homeless. I'm not sitting on a park bin bench drinking you know, cheap alcohol out of a brown paper bag. So therefore, can't possibly have a problem. So if, uh, you know, someone uh, attacked me about my drinking, you know, I would say something like, well, yeah, if you had my life, you'd be drinking too. You know, I'd try and laugh it off a little bit. Or I'd say, well, you know, things are pretty tough at the moment. You know, I've got a new boss at work. He's putting a bit of pressure on me. It's tough. Or... New boss at work, uh, he insists on we all socialize outside of work. He's a real kind of, you know, he wants to see you uh, representing the company and being a part of the team, even outside of office hours. I kind of feel compelled to go straight to the bar after work because he's there and I want him to. Can you smell the bullshit coming off me already? And, you know, if you're in denial about your drinking, you will have similar stories pre-prepared. Um, so I want you to imagine, you know, imagine I came up to you now and I challenged you on your drinking. What would be your response? How would you justify it? You will have something ready to go if you're in denial. But like I said, if, if, it was, if it genuinely wasn't a problem for you, you wouldn't have spent any time thinking about this. You wouldn't have prepared what we call plausible deniability. You'd be confused about my statement. Think about that just for a moment. If you were genuinely a moderate drinker and you had an occasional glass of wine, maybe, you know, once a month, something like that, and I came up to you and I said, hey, listen, I'm a bit worried about your drinking, you would be flummoxed, wouldn't you? You'd be like, I don't, I don't know where this is coming from. You'd be seeking clarification. You'd be saying, expand on that. What's made you think that? I can't understand it. So that's the clearest sign that you're in denial, all right? And there are many others, you know? You're, you're asking other people about their drinking. That's a good one, you know? You're asking people how much they drink, how often they drink, because what you're looking for there is permission to carry on. You're looking for uh, kind of skewed research results. You're looking for evidence that your drinking isn't what that lurking thought is telling you, and it's perfectly normal. And other people are much worse than you. And the problem with doing that is you will always have a confirmation bias about it. Whether you, the way you phrase things when you search Google, you know, you instead of searching for how can you tell when you're an alcoholic, you might search for what's a healthy amount to drink. You know, you see the way that your your phrasing changes, so it's biased in the direction of the answer you want to receive. That's why we can freak ourselves out on Google. 
you know, if you get a symptom and you start typing into Google, it's only going to take you a couple of clicks before it tells you you've got cancer. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You stub your toe and put it into Google. You've got toe cancer within three clicks. I'm telling you, because Dr. Google always gives you cancer. That's the law. But is it Google's fault? Not really. It's because our searches, our, you know, our bias is a reflection of uh, what's inside our deepest, darkest fear. You get a you get a pain you can't explain, and you're starting to panic, aren't you? You're thinking, "Oh my God, is it something serious?" I heard about my friend Dave; he got cancer, and he didn't go to the doctors in time. And then you get on Google, and before you know it, you're getting all these hideous results showing up, saying you've got you've got toe cancer, the worst one you can get. So it's confirmation bias, but it works both ways. You know, if you desperately want to prove to yourself that your drinking is nothing more than sociable and friendly and normal, you'll find that evidence online and in the people you talk to. But the biggest indicator you should have is your response to that question from other people. Did you attack them? Did you have an explanation? Did you justify your drinking? Now, I wanna give you a little warning if somebody you, who cares about you talks to you about your drinking, as much as you might be tempted to attack them and tell them to keep their nose out of your business, I want you to be aware that that is not an easy conversation for them to have with you. Nobody wants to have that conversation. And I'm telling you here and now, they've thought about talking to you many, many times before, and they've put it off. A, because they didn't want to upset you, and B, they want they didn't want the confrontation. It's a really awkward conversation. It's like telling someone they have a body odor problem. You know, you, you kind of want to tell them, partly because they smell bad and it's upsetting you, but partly because you want them to be aware that they're going around, you care about them, and they're going around, you know, having people judge them for that but you put it off for a long time until eventually you can't take it anymore and you have to. So, so when someone sits you down and says, Hey, I want to talk to you about your drinking, trust me, they've been putting this off for a long time and something has happened that has pushed them over the edge and they just simply can't leave it anymore. They've got to bring it to your attention. They don't want to be doing it. They're finding it uncomfortable. So please bear that in mind that their intentions are good as much as you will automatically want to attack them. So I hope that helps. If you are finally ready to get started on this sober journey, go to my website, stopdrinkingexpert.com. You will find a whole heap of resources, articles, and advice on there to help you in this journey. And if you're serious about getting started today and you want to do my coaching program, uh, it's not quite as simple as clicking a button and signing up because I only want people to do the course who are 100% committed to doing the course. There's some crazy stat out there that like 80% of people who buy a self-help book never even open it. Buying it is enough, but they never read it. And I don't want people signing up to my course just to say they've signed up to my course. I want it to work for you. I want it to give you the results that you went into this looking for. So you, you have to attend a webinar first where I explain the process of my course to you. I'll tell you how it works and what you're going to go through. And only then when you've listened to the full story, if you're ready to proceed at that point, I'll give you the option to sign up and become a member of the uh, inner circle, the, uh, the full 90 day quit drinking course. So if you're interested in taking that first step, sign up for the webinar, the kind of vetting process at stopdrinkingexpert.com forward slash webinar. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you tomorrow. Don't forget new videos every day at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we have that live session every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Thanks a lot. See you soon. Imagine waking up tomorrow. No hangover. No feelings of guilt or regret. Just full of energy and vitality. That goal is not only possible, it's easily achievable. Find out how 200,000 people just like you have rediscovered their happy, sober lives using the Stop Drinking Expert program. Reserve your place on today's free Quit Drinking webinar and get a copy of my best-selling book, Alcohol Lied to Me, as a free gift just for turning up.